what is it that we can do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? What failures took place? What successes are there? What can we build from from here? But bottom line is we want to make sure that this does not happen again. Right? Is that better for those folks out there? Yeah, cool. Um, now I want to bring up the uh, city manager, Charlie Myers, and talk a little bit more kind of about the uh, overall general city response to this and provide his thoughts. Uh, then we'll do some, uh, some Q&A uh, after that. So, uh, Charlie? Thank you, Mike. Hi. Uh, my name is Charlie Myers. I'm the city manager. For those of you who don't know what that means, uh, I'm hired by the city council to run the city on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the most important responsibilities that I'm given by the city council and by our city charter is to make sure that the laws that apply in Tempe are enforced. And so that's part of my responsibility. Uh, what I wanted to do here is to make sure uh, that all of you, and particularly those of you who are neighbors that are asking the question, what is the city able to do, what is the city going to do, um, I'll explain that to you. There are several processes. We've already covered completely the issue of the security plan. The security plan is mostly the responsibility of review by the police department. That makes sense. The security plan is part of a planning process which ends up in a use permit. Use permits are granted by the city. It's our community development department that does this. And they're given to uh, businesses that might have some reason why we would need to act, control their activities. For example, gas stations. Typically we get the use permit because there's things that go on in a gas station that could cause some you know, problems within the community. And certainly any establishment that sells liquor or sells food and all those kind of things, they're subject to a use permit. <coughs> so that's what's going on here. That's the process that we reviewed today and made an initial determination administratively that we were going to pursue uh, the potential that there was a violation of the use permit. In other words, we found that there was adequate evidence to suggest that the use permit was violated. And again, the security plan becomes part of that use permit. So that's the process that we'll go through and, uh, and there will ultimately be a hearing officer, which is the hearing that's scheduled on April 3rd, and then there can be appeals of whatever decisions are made by either party. Uh, what we're here to do is to make sure that everybody has a fair process, and that's important. Uh, we do have members of the city council who are here tonight. Uh, they won't be speaking, and they're here because they're interested in, uh, in this meeting. But ultimately, the city council is also in a, in a role where they may ultimately have to make a decision uh, based on some appeals that could come forward. And so it's difficult for them to be in a position of talking before a group when ultimately they may have to make a decision about uh, whatever, uh, whatever act actions are taken. Uh, so there are some council members that are here tonight. There are a couple of other processes that are out there, and we will also be evaluating those to see if violations occurred in those areas. One of those has to do with a off-track betting license that the city grants to the establishment to run off-track betting there, and of course there are provisions in there that require that, that there is certain order kept around off-track betting. In addition to that, uh, there is the liquor license. And ultimately, the liquor license is not decided by the city or the city council. It's ultimately decided by the state liquor board. But in order for it to go to the state liquor board, the city council has to pass on that and prepare and forward a recommendation to the state liquor board. So all of those uh, areas are under consideration right now, and actions have already been started in several of them, and, and I think you've heard some of that. So, that's what I want you to know is underway, and uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to emphasize this is because, unlike Tom Riff, who's had the benefit of living in Tempe for all his life and working for the Tempe Police Department for 34 years, I'm a relative newcomer to Tempe. I've been here as your city manager for four years. But for the rest of some 38 years, I have to admit, um, I've been a city manager in other parts of the country. And I've had lots of exposure to these kinds of issues related to establishments that have liquor licenses. And I've held liquor license permit hearings and the like. Uh, for better or for worse, in my last job, I was in the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. 
And there, I had the unfortunate opportunity to work on exactly this issue probably about five times. Unfortunately, in some of those cases, it didn't end up with just people being shot. It ended up with people dying. And one of the things that became clear, very clear to me, and probably becomes clear to you, is that the reason that the city has to have a process, not just for pursuing those people who uh, specifically fired guns and committed crime, but also for the establishments where those things occur, is because there is, in fact, a linkage. And experience has taught me that there's a very close linkage. And uh, Tempe is a great place to come and have a great time. We have some 250 establishments in Tempe that have security plans because of the kind of businesses that they run. And that means that on any given night, there could be up to 250 places in Tempe that are having some sort of a entertainment going on, where there's a crowd there and music playing and things going on. And day in and day out, and night in and night out, those go off without a hitch. And sometimes they don't. And my experience has taught me that the owners of these kinds of businesses have to know, they have to know what kind of artists they're bringing in in order to control the crowd. Because they are absolutely able to tweak the crowd. They are absolutely able to tweak the crowd by the a lot of different factors, one of which is the artist that they bring in. And, uh, and so when an owner of an establishment decides to book a particular artist, they have to do it with their eyes wide open. They have to do it with the understanding that sometimes these artists will bring a crowd with them that will bring violence with them, and it can end up with people being injured and people being killed. And it's our responsibility to the city to do the best we can to have an open environment to have a place where people can have fun, to have a place where artists can perform and do it in a safe environment. And what happened a week ago last Friday violated all of that. It violated the safety of the neighbors around this establishment. It violated the safety of the patrons who were there to have a good time. It violated the safety of the employees that work at the establishment. And it violated the safety of our public safety officers. Thank goodness none of which were injured or killed in this because they sometimes are the first ones that draw fire when they respond to an incident like this. And there's absolutely no excuse for putting all of those people in danger when you have the ability to avoid that kind of thing occurring. And so when I deal with sophisticated owners of these kinds of operations, they can tell me things that they can do about tweaking how the chairs are arranged, what colors they have, what kind of security they have at the door, who the artists are they're playing, what volume they're, mu they're, they're playing the music, how soon they play, how soon they end, all of these things go into a very, very sophisticated business, which is the entertainment business. And if you do it right, everybody has a great time, everybody gets an opportunity to express their artistic ability, and they go home safe at the end of the night. And when you do it wrong, people get hurt and people die. And we have a responsibility to this community, to the people who work here as well as, and importantly, the people who live there in the neighborhood, uh, to make sure that everybody stays safe. The neighbors often feel as though they are stuck on the sideline and there's nothing that they can do. It's a very, very frustrating feeling for the neighbors. And so we want to make sure by having this meeting that you at least know what's going on, what we can do and what we may not be able to do, but that we have a process in place. The people that committed the crime directly, the individuals who did the shooting, we know are members of the gang, and we can't take that stuff too lightly. We can't play around with the idea of gangs. We can play around with music and we can play around with a lot of things, but you can't play around with gangs. My experience, again, and mostly in Virginia Beach, is that these gangs are very, very dangerous. They are organized as criminal syndicates. That's their purpose. They're out there. They're organized for the purpose of creating crime. They hurt people, and they hurt people very badly, and they act very irresponsibly, and that's what happened, and that's the element that was attracted into our community a week ago last Friday night. And we have to hold those individuals who committed the acts of violence 
first responsible, we also have to hold the rest of us responsible, including those people who book the act, book the artists that come into town uh, to play those kind of things. So, it's a very serious business. Everybody's entitled to uh, a fair hearing, and everybody will get a fair hearing, but we do take this job very seriously, and we don't intend to leave any stones unturned. So with that, I know you want to get the questions, so I will turn it back to <laughs> okay, you've heard from uh, several different people, and uh, there's some other folks here in the room too that may be able to answer certain questions that come up. I will do my best also uh, to answer uh, questions. So this is your opportunity. Any uh, specific questions? If you just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. And um, I'm not going to probably not going to run the mic to you, but if you could just speak up, go ahead, sir, right here. I guess, first, I guess my question is, what if, like, you mentioned the things that were violated, but can you elaborate more on the nitty gritty on where the security plan is violated? Um, not much more than what we've discussed here, only because uh, there's a specific venue for that. This is not the intent and intent here to go through all of those uh, all of those details, um, but those are tied to the uh, use permit. Uh, but just just very briefly, and this is not everything, and some of the things have already been discussed. Uh, some of the security um, the staff, um, some of the uh, clothing uh, that they're supposed to be wearing to clearly identify themselves either as security or employees. Uh, some of the just mind control measures and those sorts of things are just a few. Uh, right here, sir. You've got one question. Uh, you know, the adage that I use, you know, when you point the finger at somebody which way and the other three fingers pointed? Mm -hmm. You put it in an establishment, from what I understand, and I was there that night, that did not even happen in the establishment, it happened in the parking lot. Who here is from the gang task force talking about the situation since this is gang related? Um, Why is the math brought up? Anything about the gang and controlling the gang activities? Not only here, but in the Yeah. Yeah. You've had your turn. Can I, can I respond? Can I respond? Can I respond? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, and you also brought up something very important uh, that's also been addressed here too, is that this is very much a regional problem. And Tempe is very much included in that. And at any given night, uh, or day for that matter, um, we have gang members throughout the valley, definitely in Tempe. The old system of gangs and what we knew when we watched movies and those sorts of things, it's very different now. It's not necessarily territorial. Um, and with that, it takes very much a regional, regional approach to that problem. And that involves working with multiple different agencies on a <coughs> local jurisdictions uh, at the state level and also even at times at the federal level. So a lot of those measures are in place. A lot of the specifics on some of those things I'm not going to go into, you know, tonight. Uh, but those things, those, those are very real issues that you're talking about. That's what I was going to say. It sounds more like white bread. White bread is something that fills you up and has no nutritional value. Prior to this or after this, not one mention, one iota, anything dealing with the gang task force whatsoever. This is gang related, not anything to do with that establishment. It's all gang related. So the focus is there. That's why I'm saying you point the finger. And, and there is, we have talked, we have talked about the gang issue. In fact, publicly, I have also. So. Um, go ahead, sir. Um, even the, the city managers admitted that this was kind of a gang situation in the parking lot. But then immediately after, he's saying we also want to hold the venue, the people that booked us, and the artists responsible. So it's like Tempe saying they support killing freedom of speech in Tempe as well. I mean, how far do you take I think, it? I think you misheard him. Are we taking freedom for security? Is yeah. this a gang thing? Or is this. Yeah, I, think what you, is I think you misheard him. Um, we talked about is this specific uh, venue or other venues that we have, and we have it's a little bit over 200 establishments. What happened at Chasers on Friday? That can host that permits to host. What's going on with that? Um, and and so with that, 